In this video, we're going to look at the operational workflow of the Consulting Partner Private Offers Program, or CPPO. We're going to cover what is CPPO, the CPPO operational process, the CPPO transactional process, invoicing and reporting, disbursement cycles, and then we'll wrap up with key takeaways and FAQs. To start, let's go over important acronyms related to this program. AMP stands for AWS Marketplace Management Portal. CPPO stands for Consulting Partner Private Offers. CP stands for Channel Partner. And ISV stands for Independent Software Vendor. Let's begin. What is CPPO? Launched in 2018, CPPO allows channel partners to resell discounted software from ISVs in AWS Marketplace to AWS customers at a wholesale discount. Some of the key benefits of CPPO include the following. With AWS Marketplace, a CP can engage customers directly and offer custom pricing through recurring and negotiated pricing and terms. As the seller of record, a CP owns the contractual and financial relationship from start to finish. CPPO provides customers with the software they need, integrated with the support they want. This supports fast procurement, deployment, and management of verified AWS-ready software. Keeping the benefits of the CPPO program in mind, let's look at how the process works. First, we'll cover the prerequisites to participate in the CPPO program for ISVs, CPs, and customers. First, the ISV must have a paid listing in AWS Marketplace. Private offers using Bring Your Own License, or BYOL, and free products are not supported by the CPPO program. Next, in order to resell that solution, CPs must be registered through AMP as an AWS Marketplace seller. If the CP is not already registered, they can get in touch with our onboarding team at aws-mp-channel at amazon.com to sign up. Finally, the customer must be an AWS customer to accept the offer. Once all three prerequisites are met, the CPPO process can begin. There are four steps in the CPPO process. Authorization, Customization, Transaction, and Invoicing and Reporting. Let's dive into the details of this process. In the first step, a channel partner must be authorized as a reseller. Here's how that authorization works. The ISV must authorize the CP to resell their product or products. The ISV then applies the agreed-upon discount from the AWS Marketplace list price. When the authorization opportunity is created by the ISV, the ISV determines whether the authorization opportunity is recurring or a negotiated discount for a single opportunity. We'll cover those types of authorization opportunities in more detail shortly. ISVs can create authorization opportunities for CPs through AMP using partner information, product information, and wholesale discount information. If you are working on an authorization opportunity that can't be created through AMP, reach out to us. Now, we'll discuss the two types of authorization opportunities ISVs can offer CPs who are authorized to resell their software. The first is a recurring authorization opportunity. With a recurring authorization opportunity, an ISV authorizes a CP to resell their product or products at an agreed-upon wholesale discount, allowing the CP to continue reselling the product without further negotiation with the ISV. This also enables CPs to create multiple private offers for multiple customers, as long as the recurring discount is active. The second type is a one-time authorization. In this case, the ISV uses AMP to create a discount to be used only with a specific buyer. Once the ISV successfully creates an authorization opportunity in AMP, either recurring or negotiated for a single opportunity, the opportunity is immediately available to the CP in AMP. If you are an ISV looking for more information on how to create authorization opportunities for CPs in AMP, please reach out to us. After authorization has occurred and the authorization opportunity is created, the second step of the CPPO process is to create a customized private offer. CPs can utilize the Offers tab in AMP to create private offers for customers. During creation, the CP customizes both the customer pricing and terms of use. Please note, however, that this automated process does not cover all CPPO scenarios. 
If you are a CP having issues creating a private offer, please reach out to us. The third step of the process is transaction. Once the CP creates the private offer, they will email instructions and the offer link to the customer for review. The customer clicks the link and completes the prompts to subscribe to the offer. The last step of the process is invoicing and reporting. Once a customer accepts a private offer, they will either be invoiced immediately or at the end of the month, depending on the type of product they purchased. AWS is responsible for collecting the funds from the customer and will distribute to the ISV and CP accordingly. Both the ISV and CP will receive reports for all accepted private offers. We'll cover the transaction process in more detail later on. ISVs and CPs that are set up with seller notifications will receive an email upon buyer's subscription to both public and private offers. Also, AWS has launched Seller Data Feed Delivery Service to sellers to meet unique reporting and visualization needs and obtain business highlights daily. Now, let's take a look at a few demos that cover the process we just went over. We are logged in to the AWS Marketplace Management Portal. As an ISV, if you want to create an authorization opportunity, you need to navigate to the Partners tab. You will be taken to the Authorization Opportunity Dashboard, where you can see all the created opportunities so far. If you want to create a new authorization opportunity, you will need to click on the Create Opportunity button. If you need more details on creation of the authorization opportunities, please review our partner course videos dedicated to ISV authorizations. Next, we are going to see how consulting partners create a private offer. For this, we are going to once again log in to the AWS Marketplace Management Portal. This time, we are logging in as a consulting partner. To create a private offer once you have received an authorization opportunity from an ISV, as a consulting partner, you will navigate to the Offers tab. You will be taken to the Offers dashboard where you can see all the offers created so far. To create an offer, you will click on the Create an Offer button and follow the steps. If you need more information on how to create a CPPO, please review our partner course series on CPPO creation. The third stage of the CPPO process is transaction. This is when the end buyer reviews and accepts the offer. We will have a look at this process. The end buyer will normally receive an email from the consulting partner that looks like this. The email will mainly contain the private offer link and the account ID targeted for the private offer. The end buyer should make sure that they are logged into the right account before being able to access the private offer. Once the buyer has reviewed the instructions in the email, they can click through the private offer link in order to see the offer page. On clicking through the link, the buyer will access the private offer page. The private offer page contains all the details of the private offer, including the pricing information, as well as the end user license agreement. When the buyer has reviewed the private offer and is okay to proceed with the transaction, they can click through the action button in order to complete the transaction. It is to be noted that each offer page might differ depending on the product being sold. If you need more information on subscribing to CPPO, please view our partner cost series on subscription to different types of products. Finally, once an offer has been accepted, the final stage is invoicing and reporting. ISVs and consulting partners have access to the reports through the AWS Marketplace Management Portal. To access the reports, Consulting partners and ISV should log into the AWS Marketplace Management Portal and navigate to the Reports tab. Here, they can see all the reports available to them. There is also more information on accessing the AWS Marketplace Analytics Service. In case you are an ISV or a consulting partner who needs more information on reporting, see our partner course videos on AWS Marketplace Reports. Let's take a look at how a transaction flows through each of the steps. 
Authorization. If the list price of a product is $100 and the ISV decides to give a 30% discount to the CP, the wholesale price to the CP will be $70. Customization. During the private offer creation process, the CP will calculate and add a markup. If the CP decides to add a 30% markup on top of the wholesale price, the final price is $91. Transaction. The customer receives a price of $91 via the private offer link, reviews the terms, and accepts the offer. Invoicing. AWS charges the customer $91 and creates an itemized invoice accordingly. If the customer is in a region where a value-added tax or any other taxes are involved, these taxes are included on top of the customer price during the invoicing phase. If you have questions regarding value-added taxes or tax management, please reach out to us for more information or submit a case to customer service in your console. Now, we'll focus on the end of the transactional flow of the CPPO program, disbursement. Once the customer pays the AWS invoice, a disbursement cycle starts. Using our example, when the customer pays $91, AWS first takes out $70, the wholesale price, leaving us with $21 that AWS will disperse to the CP. We'll cover the disbursement timelines in more detail in the next section. Now that we've walked through the CPPO transactional flow, let's take a closer look at invoicing and reporting. As we discussed, once a customer has subscribed to a private offer, the invoicing and reporting phase starts. Here, we have an example of what a commercial invoice looks like for a CPPO transaction. There are two sections, the summary and the detail section. The summary will display the total price to the customer, markup added on top of the wholesale cost, and any tax being collected. On the detail section, you can see the name of the product and the seller of record. After invoicing, both the ISV and the CP will receive reports for all accepted private offers. To see the reports, navigate to the Reports section of AMP as seen here. Next, we will cover the timeline for AWS dispersing funds to channel partners and ISVs after a CPPO transaction. AWS customers receive invoices on the third of the month. AWS Marketplace purchases are included on the customer's monthly AWS invoice and AWS invoice net payment terms apply to purchases in AWS Marketplace. Customer payments received by AWS are dispersed to ISVs between the 7th and 10th of the following month. Here's an example of a disbursement timeline. When considering the disbursement timeline, it's important to note that due to unique intake processes, buyers typically pay within an average of 25 days. To that end, it may be beneficial to add that buffer time when forecasting revenue. Now, let's review what we just learned about the CPPO process and cover some frequently asked questions. To recap, today we learned about the CPPO program overall, the requirements to get started, and the benefits for CPs, ISVs, and customers, the operational steps involved in the CPPO process, and the end-to-end -end transactional flow you can expect when leveraging CPPO. Now, let's dive into some FAQs about CPPO. Question number one. How long does it take for the authorization opportunity to be available to the channel partner in AMP once created by the ISV? Answer. Once the ISV creates the authorization opportunity in AMP, it is immediately available to the channel partner. Question number two. Does the channel partner receive margin on overage billings in addition to the customer's upfront or scheduled charge? Answer. Yes. A percentage is applied to the private offer when the wholesale cost and the customer cost is determined. The CP will receive the same margin percentage on any overage invoices that the customer accrues as upfront or scheduled invoices. Question number three. As a channel partner, how do I know the AWS processing fee associated with a CPPO transaction? Answer. Please reach out to your AWS channel account manager and a member of the team will get back to you within a business day. Thank you. If you have any questions, please reach out to us.